If you want to be at the cutting edge of digital retailing, then you need to understand one very significant player, Alibaba. It's bigger than Amazon, bigger than eBay, and bigger than Walmart. In fact, all three put together. But Alibaba is so much more than even this. I've been lucky enough to spend time with Alibaba's senior leadership team in China, and their passion and vision for the brand is exceptional. It was founded by a man with tremendous drive and creativity and the guts to take on Silicon Valley. And it's transforming the business of shopping, not just in China, but also internationally. Now, Alibaba has its sights set beyond the world of retail. Look out world, Alibaba means business. Open Sesame. If you think Amazon is the only game in town when it comes to futuristic retail, think again. Think about Alibaba. It started out a bit like an online version of this. A gigantic marketplace where you can buy absolutely anything at any time of the day or night. It's the brainchild of a former school teacher called Jack Ma. Thanks to the success of Alibaba, Ma is now China's richest man, worth a staggering $36 billion. If you only know one thing about Alibaba, then it's possibly this. It's Double Eleven Global Shopping Festival, known in the West as Singles Day, is the biggest shopping event on earth. It was the brainchild of Alibaba's Daniel Zhang, who's been driving strategy and growth at the company for years and is now the man in charge. In 2019, Alibaba's total 11 sales topped $38 billion in just 24 hours, smashing the previous year's record by 26%. I was in the Alibaba's command center watching the sales come in. The first billion dollars of sales were made in just 68 seconds. Amazing! Double Eleven is undoubtedly big, bigger than Black Friday, Cyber Monday and Prime Day all combined. And it just keeps growing every year. In many ways, the Double Eleven Festival is a reflection of Alibaba itself, because it's not just about selling lots of stuff online although it certainly does that. With an active user base of 780 million people, sales in the 2020 fiscal year passed the milestone $1 trillion mark. But what's really exciting about Alibaba is it's not just changing the face of online retail. It's transforming the whole business of shopping. They call it New Retail, and it's the seamless linking of online and offline worlds in a bold, brave way, which is tearing up the rulebook. Ma set out to beat Silicon Valley at their own game, and he has, even if at times his approach has, well, been somewhat unconventional, to say the least. Alibaba, in its current form, took some years to build, but it was Ma's ability to see a gap and his determination to fill it that drove the business forward. Alibaba's top team, led first by Jack Ma and now Daniel Zhang, have built the business by spotting gaps in the market and then finding creative ways to fill them. And now... Alibaba's 2020 fiscal revenue was a staggering $72 billion. That's a huge number. But then, 
Alibaba likes to do most things at scale. Since its initial public offering here at the New York Stock Exchange on September the 19th, 2014, one brand has gone from relative obscurity overnight to an international sensation. It's created a massive online marketplace. On that historic day, the Chinese brand Alibaba raised a massive $25 billion through this exchange and became the world's largest IPO. So, how does Alibaba work? Well, for a start, it isn't just about selling stuff. In fact, the company doesn't actually hold any inventory at scale, which means a lean operating model. Alibaba works like a marketplace where buyers and sellers connect. As well as giving Chinese brands a way to reach more consumers and to give consumers more choice than they would ever have in a physical store. Alibaba's platforms are enabling international brands, big and small, to reach Asian consumers without having to invest in physical stores. In fact, international brands accounted for some 40% of 1111 sales last year. What's remarkable about Alibaba's success is that it's happened in what was when it was launched about the least likely place you'd expect e-commerce to take off. Most Chinese homes 20 years ago didn't even have any fixed line phones, let alone mobile devices. And just a decade ago, there were some pretty good reasons why you'd expect an e-commerce venture to flop. The postal service was slow and hardly anyone had credit cards. And those who did were pretty reluctant to use them online, and a few online stores wouldn't even accept them. Again, Jack Ma saw a niche and found a way to fill it. To unleash the power of e-commerce in China, Alibaba developed a payment system that was easy to use and would be trusted by buyers and sellers. It was also more efficient than cash on delivery. It developed Alipay. This is a payment and money management app that enables shoppers to pay safely using their phone, not just in shops, but also restaurants and taxis in China and increasingly around the world. New facial recognition technologies linked to Alipay means that users can now make a payment with just a smile. Alipay is a one-stop lifestyle solution which Alibaba hopes will one day make it possible to travel the world using only a mobile phone, at least to pay. Alipay has such a profound impact on retailing in China that it features in my book, The History of Retail in 100 Objects. Thanks to Alipay, China is fast becoming a truly cashless society. As Alibaba has grown, it's identified other niches to fill in logistics, home delivery, digital marketing, online entertainment, data management, and cloud computing. As they say in Chinese, bouquet su yi, unbelievable. Today in China, Alibaba has three main e-commerce sites. Alibaba, which is a business-to-business -business site. Tmail, a business-to-consumer site. Taobao, a consumer-to-consumer -consumer site. But Alibaba's broader commercial infrastructure is vast. It also includes a massive financial service business, which Alipay is part of. Called Ant Financial, it offers insurance, managed funds, as well as loans for consumers and small businesses. 
And if you think it's quick and easy to shop with Alibaba, you can fill in a loan application online in just three minutes and get a decision made by artificial intelligence in one second. As it's expanded, Alibaba has identified barriers to growth and then systematically developed ways to remove them. It's always surfed some pretty big waves created by massive changes in China. Changes that continue to drive growth for Alibaba today. The country's retail market is immense and it's still growing, especially online. China now accounts for just over half of all the sales made online globally. By 2020, 63% of all the world's online sales are expected to come from China. People aren't just buying clothes, cosmetics, and electronics and gifts on Alibaba platforms. They're also buying groceries. More on that a little bit later. And just about every service you could think of, travel tickets, ride sharing, you name it. Another major catalyst for Alibaba's growth has been the rise of the middle classes in China. They're forecast to number more than 600 million by 2022. That's an increase from today of some 300 million consumers. These are people with big aspirations, rising spending power, and they're all equipped with one of these. Yes, a smartphone. Chinese consumers are now the most connected in the world. And all digital life takes place on a smartphone. This is the internet in China. And some of these people are pretty big spenders. Already around 100,000 consumers in China are spending over $150,000 a year on the Alibaba platforms. Alibaba's mission is simple but broad, to make it easy to do any business anywhere. It wants to build the future infrastructure of commerce and to be a company that lasts at least 102 years. A lot of Chinese companies talk about wanting to last a century. So why 102 years? Well, Jack Ma has explained it like this. Alibaba was founded in 1999. So if it lasts 102 years, it will span three centuries. Now, that's a pretty long-term mission, but being Alibaba, it's going about it at supersonic speed. The Alibaba business is now a broad ecosystem of interconnected companies and tools. They include commerce, digital media, home delivery, cloud computing, and local services. Not just in China, but increasingly elsewhere. Alibaba is now run by Chairman Daniel Zhang. He wants at least half of the company's revenues to come from outside of China. This is a company founded in China, but created for the world. This is why it's called Alibaba. Ma famously thought of the name Alibaba and its association with a magical cave while in a San Francisco coffee shop on his first visit to the US back in 1995. He asked the waitress what she thought and was told it made her think of Alibaba and the 40 thieves. For good measure, he then asked another 30 people outside on the street and regardless of their own origins from Tokyo to Germany, most knew of the story of Alibaba and how the words open sesame revealed the cave's treasures stolen by the 40 thieves. Alibaba, a kind of businessman, eventually outwits and defeats them. It's a strong brand association. In truly inspirational Ma style, he then told those same people 
Alibaba opened Sesame for small to medium-sized companies. While in the States and staying with his friends, he had also discovered the World Wide Web. And when he searched for the word beer in China, he saw no listings. He was determined to change that and went home and set up a website called China Pages, which failed. In 1999, he eventually talked a group of friends, some of them teachers, into joining his business. Ma was seriously persuasive. He even got his colleagues to put their own money into the company and told them, our competitors are not in China, but in America's Silicon Valley. We need to learn the hardworking spirit of that valley. To realize its ambitions, Alibaba has not been shy in making audacious, strategic, multi-billion dollar investments in e-commerce, in payments, in delivery, in infrastructure, and other companies, both in China and overseas. In 2016, Alibaba took a giant step into Southeast Asia, investing in the Lazada e-commerce group based in Singapore. That gives it vast footprints in Indonesia, Malaysia, the Philippines, Singapore, Thailand and Vietnam. India's another long-term growth market for Alibaba and has put a foot in the water with a stake in the Indian company Snapdeal and amongst others as well. Investment also in Dazara gives it a presence in Pakistan, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, Myanmar and Nepal. The list goes on. Their goal is to serve 2 billion customers. That's around a third of the planet. When it's weighing up opportunities for overseas growth, Alibaba seeks out large consumer bases and places with the least developed infrastructure. That means they can provide consumers there with something they don't already have access to. The first step in entering a fresh new country is usually to connect the makers and vendors of great products from that country with the consumers of China. Already, Alibaba is working with over 10 million small businesses right across the world. Alibaba is so keen to level the playing field for small and medium businesses, giving them the same access to global markets the big companies have, that they're pushing for new global trade rules. They're lobbying for an electronic world trade program, which could make cross-border trading much simpler and enable anyone with a mobile phone to buy and sell globally. To guide brands on where the best opportunities are, Alibaba has set up the Team Out Innovation Center, which uses consumer insights based on Alibaba's vast stores of real-time user data to help brands develop, design and market new products specifically to Chinese consumers. It also cuts in half, or more than half, the time it traditionally takes for new product development and that means companies can respond instantly to changing consumer preferences. It's inspired everything from new flavours of mouthwash aimed at women to special edition Maseratis, in China only colours and with features the brand knows its buyers are looking for. In the Brand Z rankings of the most valuable brands from around the world, Alibaba takes the number one spot in China. And in 2020, it's risen to sixth place amongst the top 100 most valuable global brands. Among the world's retailers, it's second to Amazon and ahead of Walmart. Not bad for a company that's just 20 years old. Brand Z is part of WPP and Kantar, and it's the world's largest brand equity platform. As Alibaba has grown, it's brought previously unimaginable choice and convenience to shopping. 
It's also turned shopping into a form of entertainment, or as Alibaba call it, retailtainment. In fact, while many e-commerce sites aim to get consumers to the checkout as fast as possible, at Alibaba, it's a bit like the opposite. Shopping has become a highly desirable experience, one that brings together social, networking, entertainment, logistics and more. Taobao, for instance, is so rich in content, people go there to spend time as well, not only to save time. Dwell times are high, many minutes per session, and consumers come back several times a day. That's because every time the user opens the app, they see something new, videos, products, and live video streams. The most successful brands post seven or more new pieces of content per day. The content's tailored just for them by some amazing artificial intelligence. Alibaba's chief marketing officer, Chris Tang, says AI is like the modern day GPS for marketeers, an essential tool of the trade. Another phenomenon of e-commerce in China is Alibaba's enablement of social commerce. Online influencers through Alibaba's platforms create live video streams about the products they love. And shoppers can seamlessly and friction-free buy them instantly while they watch. See now, buy now is the mantra. But Alibaba's online influencers aren't always quite what you might have in mind. The usual range of celebrities. Take China's farmers who have become online opinion leaders as part of Alibaba's push to boost rural development by linking consumers directly with small holding farmers. Around 1,000 of them now live stream across China to promote their produce, all of which is available to buy on Alibaba's Taobao platform. Sales are great, of course, but this kind of content isn't just about driving sales. It's also a great tool for building a strong brand. Consumers can interact with brands on Alibaba platforms, ask questions, and develop relationships that build brand love, an essential ingredient for growing brand value, according to Brand Z. What's extraordinary and challenging to every retailer on the planet is that Alibaba isn't just changing the face of online retail. It's transforming the whole business of shopping and consumption. They call it new retail. You see, Alibaba wants to digitize and transform every aspect of the consumption chain, from product innovation and consumer acquisition to service, merchandise, payments, and logistics, and everything in between. And at a time when many retailers around the world are closing shops, Alibaba's new retail involves big investments in physical stores. The best way to explain new retail is to show you. I'm in a store in Shanghai launched by Alibaba called Fresh Hippo. In some ways, it's like a normal supermarket with a big focus on everything being fresh. But watch this. There's QR codes on everything, and I can use my smartphone to find out about ingredients. I scan as I browse, and the store learns more about what I like. It also takes account of other aspects of my digital life, like the ads I've clicked on, the TV shows I've watched, and even the links I've shared with friends, so it can make recommendations just for me. And if I don't fancy grappling with how to cook this massive lobster myself, they'll cook it for me. The stores have a food court where chefs whip up fabulous meals like this, just minutes after I've selected the ingredients from the shelves. Because it knows where I am in the store, it can time the cooking to the minute, so it's ready to serve just as I take my seat. But one of the cleverest things 
about this store and about new retail is the way it reinvents what a physical store is for. As you can see, this is both a supermarket and a restaurant, but look up. These bags you see flying around are people's online orders. Groceries and cooked meals can be delivered to customers living nearby in just 30 minutes. This is proving so popular that Alibaba says people are actually moving house so they can be within a three kilometer radius of a store and qualify for that half an hour delivery promise. Not surprisingly, property prices around the stores are growing pretty fast as well. The service is so fast because of Alibaba's innovative technologies and the fact that each store is also a warehouse and a fulfillment center. This busts the model that has driven the retail industry for decades, having massive out-of-town warehouses delivering to mega stores. Alibaba has realized something simple but fundamental to the success of new retail. Speed of service matters a lot. By deploying smart technology and predictive AI data analytics, having products on standby close to where consumers are in places like this, they can achieve phenomenally fast delivery times. Alibaba also has a department store chain called InTime. It uses the same new retail principles to give consumers the best of an online offline experience. In fact, when many of InTime's physical stores were closed due to COVID-19, the store's digital activity became a lifeline. In time, ramped up its live streaming to 200 sessions a day, morning and night. And thousands of sales associates became live streaming hosts so they could keep on selling, even in a lockdown. The idea and tech driving new retail and their stores can also be applied to other retailers. The Chinese hub market, RT Mart, where Alibaba has a significant investment, has put a hundred of its stores through an Alibaba-led digital transformation. There are also interactive kiosks, in-store fulfillment of online orders, and vastly improved digital enhanced shopping experiences. Alibaba is helping grocery retail partners through its Dao Xian Da business. This lets consumers order through the Taobao app and then takes care of delivery. It's also leading the digital transformation of other physical store networks. Nearly 500 of Sun Arts hypermarkets in China have been given the Alibaba makeover, bringing digital experiences into stores and using physical space to fulfill orders placed online. In Shanghai is possibly the coolest coffee shop in the world, thanks to a tie-up between Alibaba and Starbucks. The physical store works with mobile and augmented reality technology powered by Alibaba cloud technologies. So I can see how my coffee beans are processed and use special photo filters to share unique images with friends. Starbucks is now built into all Alibaba apps, so consumers can order coffee for collection or delivery via Alibaba's delivery company, as well as buy coffee and gifts for friends and earn rewards for loyalty, all without leaving the app. Alibaba isn't just obsessed with the new. Another aspect of new retail to them is the old. Like the traditional mum and pup stores, of which here in China there are plenty. In fact, physical stores still account for around 80% of total retail sales. There's a market worth $4.8 trillion a year, and it's not going away soon. Alibaba are offering these small stores a digital makeover with potent yet easy to use technology that manages their analog business in a digital way. It provides apps and shopper analytics, which allow shopkeepers to spot sales opportunities and order 
and buy more efficiently. For many mum and pop store owners, it's a mighty leap from managing the business by Abacus to doing so with silicon. This year, Alibaba opened the doors to its first hotel, Flyzu as it's called, in the company's home city of Hangzhou. It uses digital technology just about everywhere. When guests arrive, they're greeting by an AI-enabled robot, which uses facial recognition technology to check their identity. And after you're checked in, there's no need for keys or key cards. Facial recognition technology determines access to rooms and other facilities, such as the gym. Smart speakers with Alibaba's voice technology assistant in every room allow guests to adjust the lighting and the temperature with simple voice controls. And watch what happens when you order room service, using a voice command, obviously. I don't believe that Alibaba is planning to become a major player in the hotel industry. It's using Flyzu to show the hospitality industry and other industries for that matter, what's possible with Alibaba's new retail thinking, coupled with their cloud technology. It demonstrates how to unite the best of the physical and virtual worlds to create new economics and create partnerships with the world's leading hotel operators. You can see now that new retail thinking can be applied not just to shopping or hotels, but used to transform all of the service industries. The business runs on innovation and agility. So when the coronavirus struck, Alibaba didn't sit back. It actively empowered the organization to help China and the world. As well as donating millions from the Jack Ma Foundation and the Alibaba Foundation to buy much needed medicines, masks and equipment, it used its detailed supply chain knowledge and infrastructure to guarantee fast delivery. When it became clear that schools right across China wouldn't be able to reopen after Chinese New Year, Alibaba almost overnight re-engineered its cloud computing systems. This enabled its Ding Talk service to serve around 120 million students and 140,000 schools so they could hold their classes online. The same service also enabled over 200 million people to start working remotely. Ali Health launched a free online clinic for people worried about their symptoms. In just one week, over the spring break, it was used by over 2.8 million people. Alibaba's AI computing power has helped Medic shorten the diagnosis time for COVID-19 from over two hours to just 20 seconds with a higher level of accuracy. Its platforms, cloud architecture and infrastructure enable brands to remain connected with their consumers, realizing a more digital and cloud-based life across many sections. From large companies to small independent retailers who are able to live stream to their customers, many for the very first time, selling products and fulfilling them with home delivery. And on a lighter note, enabling cloud fitness classes and even cloud clubbing. This infrastructure and the undoubted lessons that Alibaba would have learned during various stages of the virus crisis will enable them to help businesses to radically transform themselves and to help them respond faster to changing consumer expectations in a post-coronavirus world. This is classic Alibaba, quick to respond, generous with their expertise and financial resources, a technology infrastructure that's able to scale instantly, and people with a can-do spirit. 
This same spirit and the driving force behind new retail is what's leading Alibaba in even more varied directions. Its big vision, seamlessly combining the physical and the virtual, now extends to the entire consumption market. From the dark days of thieves hidden in caves to the magic of what could be stored in the cloud, Alibaba is an incredible brand story. Alibaba's vision and execution has the capacity to revolutionize retail and other industries right across the world. Chinese consumers love Alibaba and the new chairman Daniel Zhang. But will Zhang be able to keep rivals at bay? It's changing the way we shop, the way we think, the way business is conducted, even where and how we live. My view is there's no business in the world that can afford to ignore what Alibaba is doing, nor should they imagine that in innovation and e-commerce, Amazon simply has to be the ultimate winner. It's too soon to say now whether Alibaba will achieve its goal of being a business that successfully spans three centuries. The wonderful thing we learn from the history of retail in a hundred objects book is that many things have had a profound impact, but very little is forever. But remember, in the fabled story that gives this business its name, Alibaba does win in the end.